Open the eyes of our hearts. What a way to begin a Sunday morning. Let us pray. Holy God, open our eyes to see your light shine through the darkness that's around us, through the sadness that, that infects our lives, and help us to see the power of your love shining in the hearts of those near to us. We begin this morning praying for your blessing upon us as we begin every day. In your holy name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word. 
when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things that we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us. That we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us. And reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Amen. Reject in the good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. May the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, all and also you. with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So um, <laughs> this morning we have a story from um, the Bible, like we often do. And this story, it's actually, there's a lot that Jesus says in the Bible Bible. And then the story Bible says like a softer version of it. 
Just so you know, like sometimes it doesn't use all the words, right? But today it's a really important lesson. It's uh, from a really big sermon that Jesus gave called the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Sermon on the Mount. It's very exciting. Um, so I'm going to read some of it in the kids' Bible version. You ready? Yeah? No? You ready, Allison? So exciting. <laughs> Jesus teaches about anger. I know none of you ever get angry, but, but sometimes us adult people do. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> One day, Jesus was teaching a crowd of people. He explained some very good ways to treat others with love and respect. Do not call other people names, Jesus said. He explained that using unkind names hurt people's feelings. Jesus continued, if you are angry with someone, talk to them about what makes you angry, work the problem out, and forgive each other. Forgiveness shows love. The people nodded, listening to what Jesus was saying. Treat your family members and friends politely and kindly, Jesus said. Kindness and respect are important. Use God's name respectfully, too. Use it only for worship and praise. God's name is special. Wow, Jesus had great things to tell the people. How wonderful the world would be if everyone followed Jesus' words. So it then goes on to say a whole lot more, including that you should love your enemies. And when someone tries to strike you, you should turn the other cheek, as in just be like, no, I'm not going to hit you back. I'm not going to rise to what you're trying to do, but I am going to respond in peace. Doesn't that sound really hard to do? Doesn't that sound really hard? You know, how Jesus actually ends this portion of what he's saying is he says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Do you, are you guys perfect? Are you guys perfect? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the truth is that none of us can be perfect. But sometimes we look at all the bad things that are going on in the world, and you think, Psh, at least I'm not doing that. But what Jesus wants to remind us is that we, we can do things to make the world more loving and more kind and more peaceful. And so... I have something for you today. I have something for you today. Yep. And um, you, you, what do you want? You want to know what it is? It is a, <laughs> this is a tattoo. <laughs> it's a temporary tattoo, right? Okay, so it can wash off eventually. But it's a tattoo, and when you put it on, it says who you are which is that you're not perfect. You mess up all the time. It's really hard to do all the things to make the world what it should be. And so it, it says <coughs> sinner. Yep, it says sinner. But then you look at it upside down, and it says saint. Huh. Wow. Because you also can do amazing things as a child of God. Isn't that cool? So it does both. So you can put those on with an adult's help, okay? And it will remind you that it's okay that, that you make mistakes, but also that God claims you as beloved and as a saint of God, okay? All right, I'm going to give these out as you head out, but first I think we should pray. Can you all repeat after me? All right. Dear God, thank you for the words of Jesus that remind us that we can love one another and make the world a better place. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as we sing our next song, oh, you never let go, such a good one. So again, as the spirit leads, feel free to stand, sit, clap, dance, whatever. But uh, as we start singing, you all can come get a tattoo.
welcome to worship this morning on this uh, Sunday in February, Sunday um, of Epiphany season. Uh, I see the ushers on the move, ready to distribute the uh, welcome pads. <laughs> we invite you to uh, just write your information in so that we can celebrate your presence among us today, and it's our way of keeping track and letting people know what's going on. So please uh, fill those out, and they'll come collect them as the announcements are wrapping up this morning. If you're joining us online, I already saw at least one person uh, put in their comments of greeting, but if you are joining us online, please share in the comments that you are there, that we can, um, that we can know that you are in community with us today. Um, let's see. Uh, just a few announcements today. One is that last night we had a Valentine's dinner. Uh, many of you were here with us last night. It was a joyous occasion. Um, in fact, you'll notice that there are some lovely treats out here today, as there often are after church, and those are from last night's uh, Valentine's dinner because there were some left, and so please enjoy them after the service um, here in the commons. And thank you to everyone who hosted and who cooked and baked and everyone who came. Um, the silent auction is over. So no, I'm sorry, Linda, I overheard you. You cannot bid on them anymore. The time has passed. But if you did bid on them and you won things, there's one table left. They finally managed to get it all down to one table. If you have items to still pick up, please do that today. You have until next Sunday to do that. Otherwise, we'll go to the next highest bidder. Um, Ash Wednesday uh, is a week and a half in a, in a week and a half from now on February 22nd, and so that begins our Lenten season. And so we will have worship as we do every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. here uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, however, it will be an Ash Wednesday service, which will include the imposition of ashes. Um, if you like to get your ashes in the beginning of the day. Um, and therefore, you can proudly but humbly wear your ashes for the whole day long. You can come between 7.45 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. here um, on Rasp Avenue, right by the courtyard, and receive them at the beginning of the day. Um, on Ash Wednesday, we will also have Bible study. We do not have a pancake supper this year, but we will have uh, Bible study at 6 p.m. And it's a special treat because we are beginning the New Testament very exciting. We've been in the Old Testament for um, about a year and eight months, <laughs> so we invite you to, um, to come along as we start with the New Testament with the first half of the Gospel of Mark, the first Gospel account written down. And then we'll continue with that study on the following Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., all the Wednesdays in March, um, so beginning March 1st, there will be a daytime Bible study um, that will actually be focused on the Lord's Prayer, led by Pastor Carl Myers, who was presiding today. And so if you're looking for a daytime study um, and want to dive more deeply into the Lord's Prayer, we invite you to come and be a part of that. Uh, you are welcome to bring your lunch um, and eat your lunch with with others after the study concludes. And then there are a ton of opportunities to serve. We just keep serving in so many ways, in feeding people and in mentoring young people. Uh, the after school program has begun. Um, we are entering our fourth week of the after school program on Wednesdays. And so if you would like to come help with that, please uh, let me know and we will get you connected. All right, and now at this time, we turn our attention to the reading of God's word. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God and walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and 
the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray, to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and the length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you, to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the proclamation of the gospel of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And you, if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the fire, to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, <coughs> then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better to, for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this. Thank you, Michael. It's one of those gospels that you end it and you and you want to say the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> you know, I think we too often underestimate one another. 
We don't expect much from one another. We don't expect our neighbors to notice when our patterns change. We don't expect teachers to take extra time with struggling students. We don't expect our city to grow or thrive or be safe for all. We don't expect our church to recognize who we are in its fullness. We don't expect elected leaders who actually see themselves as public servants. We don't expect end to war, uh, an end to war or for peace to reign. We want all those things, sometimes desperately so, and sometimes that longing leads to complaining. Not solution seeking, not problem solving, not collaboration, but just complaining about all that is broken, seemingly beyond repair. But Jesus, as harsh as what we hear from Jesus today sounds in our ears, Jesus is holding us to a higher standard. Yes, of course, don't murder, right? That should seem obvious. But before we can even get to that point, stop pointing the finger, escalating tension and judgment and violence. Yes, of course, don't break the covenant of marriage, but before we even get there, let not lust rule in your heart. Yes, divorce is sometimes the best course of action, but let us not casually dispose of people especially the most vulnerable. In fact, it reminds me of a conversation I had with a retired cop just a couple weeks ago. I met him um, after a funeral here at Epiphany. We had gone to a luncheon after the committal, and we got into a conversation, and as soon as I heard him say that he had been um, a cop on the Drug Enforcement Division and then in the Homicide Division in Southeast Baltimore, I admit that my expectations were low. <laughs> I expected him to complain, to talk about how horrible the city is these days because we aren't being tough enough on criminals. And you know what he did? He did lament, right? But he immediately talked about the need, the deep need to address the underlying causes of violence. That when we're just going after the symptoms, the perpetrators of violent crime, then it's not going to get any better. But we need to know our communities, talk to families of victims, form relationships, people who can help officers solve crimes and slowly work to transform communities, to build trust. And we need to again do after school programs and little leagues. He talked about, as sometimes happens around here, he talked about 50 years ago when Epiphany had an after-school school program that was known throughout the whole community called the Tuesday Night Youth Program. Some of you have heard about it. It's kind of a big deal around here. And he talked about that at that time, Epiphany was not unique. I mean, it's always been unique, right? But it was not unique in having an after-school program. There were after-school programs all across the city. You could not possibly be in a neighborhood that did not have an after-school program, an opportunity for young people to learn and grow and be grounded in community. But that those are no longer around. He spoke of the need for a strategy, a real strategy to seriously address the underlying causes of violence in our city. I know that the harsh language that Jesus uses today hits us in a certain way. 
But in truth, he is only doing what those before him have done. Jesus is not saying, just don't murder. No, Jesus is going to the underlying causes of what makes us live in a community, in a society where homicide happens. Jesus is saying we have to get to the point where we are no longer at war with one another in our communities. Jesus is holding us to a higher standard. He is following the rabbinic tradition before him to take the law and put it to its extreme to hold us to a higher standard. That they need to do better. We need to do better. In fact, it doesn't just stop with Jesus. Long after Jesus rose from the grave, Martin Luther came along and did quite the same thing in the small catechism. You remember the small catechism? Yeah, I actually um, I have one right here. It's very small, right? Luther did much the same thing, and when he talked about the Ten Commandments, so when Jesus talks about all the things that we should do, Jesus says, you have heard it said, but I tell you, and then he ups the ante, right? Well, Luther does much the same thing when he says, you shall not murder. And then he explains it, we are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. It is not enough not to murder one another. We need to know our neighbor. We need to seek out reconciliation in our families, in our neighborhoods, in the church. We don't get the rest of what Jesus says uh, in this vein this year because, um, because Easter is a little earlier. So the next week would actually cover what Jesus says in the rest of this, you have heard it said, but I tell you. And so you might recognize some pieces from that. It includes, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other also. And you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Finally, He ends with my favorite commandment in all of scripture because it's so ridiculous. Jesus finally says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, this isn't just setting an impossibly high standard, though it is that forcing us to recognize that we all need God's grace, that it's not just those murderers over there or those Russians that are doing those horrible things over there or those drug dealers over there. No, all of us bear responsibility for the society in which we are living, and we all fall short and need rely on the grace of God. But Jesus also lays out for us the root of all that is broken in the world and gives us some agency to do something about it. That we are not in a place where we can just point at others and say they're the problem. No, we need to look in the mirror and see that we too have a role to play. So be bold in faith. Mentor young people, (coughs) hint, hint, in our after-school program. Maybe you'll create a path you could not have foreseen for a young person. Get involved in your neighborhood association. You might build something for the next generation that is better than the hardship we now witness. Come and volunteer at Loaves and Fishes on Saturdays to make sure that this community receives enough food and enough clothing to get through their days. Volunteer your time by singing in a band that pays you nothing but sings glory to God every week. 
Stay long after the school day is over because you're a teacher and you have worked every night to plan for your students and then you hang around to help with the after school activities. Don't only go to AA meetings because you know that you need to continue the process to keep your recovery, but go to help the next person that they too can find a path forward. Be bold in faith. And know that while you boldly seek to follow Jesus, while you choose life, despite all the obstacles, God will over and over again choose you as a beloved child of God with hope in Jesus' name. Amen. As you reflect on that, we sing a perfect song, as it works out, for, um, for what we do next, for how we um, steward the gifts that God gives us, not only our financial gifts, but the gifts of our time and our talents, as we sing the song, I Give Myself Away. And so please consider what gifts you might give to this ministry that we share. There's an offering plate to place your financial commitments. There is also an opportunity to give online. And again, there are so many opportunities to build up your community. Consider what ways you might be about that work to show the good news that God is love.
if you will rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your love for us in Jesus Christ. You have given us your love in every generation. You have commissioned us as servants of Christ for all people. In the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life as we pardon, proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup that they may be for us Christ's body and his blood. As you feed us with these gifts, make us more and more to be like Jesus, our Savior. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to the day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with the angels and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you come forward to receive communion, at the guidance of the ushers, you approach, approach the, the baptismal font where you will receive a wafer a promised presence of Christ's body for us. And then to, and then to this side, to this side to receive a cup either of wine or grape juice, which is white. Um, once again, we are receiving it by intinction, which means that you will take the wafer and dip it into one of those cups to receive God's promised presence. Come now to the table of the Lord.
And now may the holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And may the God of glory of God dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. the good news that God is love, word and deed. Thanks be to God.
think that this year you need a more Vic or need a... You oil need oil, oil in there. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.